All right, so it's been a year since we switched from um, a tank hot water system to a tankless hot water system. Um, and after using the tankless system for a year, I thought I'd give my review so far. All right, so what is my situation? My situation is that I live in a three bedroom, two and a half bath house. We don't have any children, so it's just my wife and I, and occasionally a visiting guest. Oh, and <clears throat> we also wash our dogs. Uh, we have a separate forced air furnace that heats the house by natural gas. So if you're planning on using uh, one of these units to uh, both provide you with hot water but also heat your house, this isn't probably the right review for you. Uh, we're only using it for just hot water. All right, we have a, a Navion. Uh, it's a model NPE. 180A, if that means anything to you. And uh, we did have somebody uh, come and install it for us um, in our crawl space. So I'm under our house right now. Um, previously, we had a 39 gallon uh, hot water tank. Uh, because of the short space down in here, um, it was kind of an odd sized uh, hot water tank, at least that's kind of how, what I found in researching it and what was kind of told to me. Our conclusion after one year is uh, we like it. Um, we're really happy with it. And if we were able to go back in time and uh, choose again, we would make the same choice. Um, is it perfect? No. Um, there's pros and cons with uh, both systems, I think. And uh, I'll go into that. But the truth is um, it's really there's not a noticeable difference between the tankless and a tank top water system. Um, by and large. So on a day-to-day -day basis, I really don't notice the difference. And um, when I was researching and deciding which way to go, I know I um, really hesitated and was kind of worried about it. But I think the fact that it seems very much the same is, is probably a good thing. Again, I, I stressed a lot on you know what I should choose. And I'll admit that um, I'm still a little skeptical. Um, you know, whether I'll be happy or not in five years. Um, after all, the tank that we had before, the tank system that we had before, um, appeared to be the original tank of this house, which is probably about 20 years old. So uh, we definitely got, or this house definitely got the use out of that tank or their money's worth out of it. So being that, that we're only one year into it, um, that's the part that I'm still skeptical about. Yeah. All right, so the pros. Um, obviously, endless hot water is the huge pro. What can I say? I, I love uh, taking long, hot showers. Um, in the past, if someone else took a long hot shower before me and then I got into the shower, um, you could feel the temperature drop and, you know, at some point through the shower and I kind of knew that uh, it wasn't going to get any hotter and it was just going to continue to get colder and rather quickly, so I better hurry and hop out. Um, I never have to worry about that anymore. I can take as long of a hot shower as I want and it's um, great. Uh, second pro is uh, saving energy when we're not using it. So I, I love being able to go on vacation for a week um, and knowing that the house isn't wastefully heating 39 gallons of you know water that we won't use for at least a week. On that note, um, I have looked at the water and natural gas usage bills that I have. Um, I didn't go into great detail inspecting them, but uh, comparing the last year with this year, um, I can concede that we're using a little bit more water and uh, the energy is probably about the same. So we're not really uh, saving a noticeable difference either. So <clears throat> um, I can't really say that by going this route that it's been really eco-friendly since it seems that we are maybe taking longer showers. In our situation, I really like supporting the the movement uh, behind going tankless. I feel like that's the future, just like solar panel is. And uh, I feel like the more and more people that go tankless, the more there's going to be a demand for it. So therefore, the more uh, they're going to make more models, more uh, companies are going to try to make profit and go in there. And then that competitiveness will actually probably make them more efficient and uh, make them uh, better in the long run. Uh, so when I look at solar panel, you could arguably say that uh, the people that first got into it certainly weren't doing it for an economic reason. Um, it was very expensive and as more and more people get into it, that expense comes down and the performance of the solar panels have just gotten better and better. So it's kind of along that, that same idea. Uh, moving into the cons, um, it probably is more expensive up front. Uh, 
Although in our situation, uh, the previous tank that I had, as I mentioned, was an odd size. And so uh, because of that, um, and because of, it was kind of outdated, um, one of the plumbers that we went to for a quote was telling us that in order to make it uh, earthquake up to codes with earthquakes and things like that, um, the cost was actually going to be substantially higher than what I was expecting. So by able to go to the tankless system, really compared to that quote anyway, um, it was about the same cost for us. We did go with a different plumber too, I should mention. The second con, which is probably the biggest con in my mind, even though I don't want to blow it out of proportion, is it seems to be less consistent um, when others are using it. And that could be people using hot water in the house, or it could be appliances that are using the hot water. So as I understand it, uh, what the unit does is it tries to produce whatever temperature you have set here. So I have 130 degrees. It's going to try to produce 130 degrees of hot water um, regardless of the amount of flow. So that means that if, if you just have a trickle that you're using at the sink, it really isn't going to have to heat nearly as, as hot as if you have a shower going and it's going full bore or even two showers going and it's going full bore and then lots of water rushing through it and so then it has to heat at a much higher rate. So that's where I think that it, it fails um, in uh, comparison to a hot water tank where the hot water tank has a 39 gallons of you know that amount of heated water and if you take a little or a lot it's consistently going to be sending pretty close to the same heat the entire time no matter how much water is flowing through that again when i jump in the shower and i'm showering and nobody else is using the hot water i can get it to a consistent rate and it will stay at that consistent rate um, for what seems like an endless amount of time uh, it doesn't really change I one time got into the shower and my wife was having a productive chore day and uh, she decided to start the uh, laundry machine as well as our dishwasher and she was washing dishes all at the same time and um, while I was in the shower I, I certainly uh, with those appliances um, requesting water and turning it back off and back and forth things like that and then her turning on and off the water washing dishes um, I, it was not a consistent shower at all and every time um, the water changed, I probably adjusted, and then it was trying to adjust, and then it would stop, and then it would get real hot, and it just went back from a you know, really cold to really hot to really cold shower, um, and wasn't real good. Again, I, we would have had some of that with the tanked water system, but I think it was much more prevalent with uh, the tankless system because it's trying to react to everything, and it just uh, can't do it immediately. It's just kind of unrealistic. So we did test it uh, between two showers. Uh, we had two showers going at the same time and it was able to keep up with two showers no problem. Um, it, you know, once you get the temperature set in both showers, it stays really consistent the entire time. The thing that I kind of question um, is if we had kids and I was in taking a shower and the kid jumps in the shower and they're adjusting you know, to the right temperature and then I'm having to adjust mine and they're adjusting theirs and I could just see this, this endless trigger of back and forth um, or maybe it wouldn't be so consistent. Um, but The next con is that uh, maintenance is needed on these uh, systems. So in our old hot water tank, if maintenance was needed, I, I never did it. Uh, there was never any maintenance that I did on that um, old tank. And on these new ones, uh, the plumber had explained to me that that's the, the number one reason why these tend to go bad is that uh, the scaling builds up in them and uh, there's a sensor when it knows, how it knows to uh, turn on and turn off is essentially when you turn on the water, it spins something in there and it knows that water's flowing. So if that gets, you know, built up and caked with, you know, scaling or calcium or whatever it is, um, that won't spin and the system just won't work. So um, <clears throat> it's something that I'm a little worried about. We don't have a soft water uh, tank. We don't uh, have even a filter. We're just using city water. And um, anyway, that's just something that I feel like we need to stay on top of. So I have been uh, flushing the system and I've been doing it every six months. So since we've had it a year, I've done that twice. Um, and it's really not that big of a deal as well as check the air filter and the inlet filter uh, for the water where I just, I never had to do that before with the old tank. Uh, the other kind of con, it's not a huge one, but the other kind of con is, is that it takes electricity. So uh, we now have to plug it in. Um, we didn't, you know, we probably should at some point um, have it wired over here. Instead, we just have an extension cord running over and plugging it in right now. 
um, but uh, it is obviously using some electricity now 24-7, uh, which is a little less eco-friendly uh, versus the hot water tank before that didn't use any electricity. So it's kind of a small con. Um, another one that's kind of a small one is um, the extra noise. So the system does make a little noise when it's running, um, and it's not loud, it's not you know bad or anything like that. Um, but it's just something that I don't recall our old tank uh, making any any extra noise uh, while it was heating and things like that. It was so quiet at least that I wouldn't wouldn't notice it or hear it. Um, this again, it's it's in our crawl space. Um, we just have a dining room and, and living room above us, um, so it's not like it makes enough noise that we hardly even notice it up there. We we can hear it up there, but it, we hardly notice it. And it certainly doesn't bother us. Uh, but I bring it up because if and you're in a situation where maybe you're putting this, I, I probably would avoid putting it, you know, against, you know, a bedroom wall or something like that, um, especially if, if it's a light sleeper. Other FYIs. Um, so I have some other FYIs that uh, I thought I'd mentioned that um, I just thought would be good to know. I, I don't think I really uh, knew it before I had bought the unit, and I just think it's good to know probably before you do it. Um, the one is that it is a condensing unit, so uh, that came as a surprise to me and I learned about it after the installation. Because it's a condensing water heater, uh, a little bit of water will drain from the tube at the bottom of the unit. And according to the instruction manual, the unit causes that disposal water to have an increased acidic pH um, of 3 to 5, if that means anything to you, but uh, a higher uh, acidic pH. And over time, that can cause damage to pipes. So they recommend that you have that drain um, into a laundry drain because the um, alkali in the laundry detergent will actually neutralize that um, that acid or that extra little pH acid buildup. So, um, <clears throat> but again, um, I didn't know about that, and so now we have an extra device down here uh, where it drains into, and then this device. Um, you know, just pumps the water then up. Since we're, again, in a crawl space, there's nothing lower for it to drain into, so then we actually have to pump that up to our laundry room, which isn't a big deal. We, you know, you wouldn't notice it, um, but it was just something that I wasn't aware of, and again, that's one more thing that's running off of power, um, and it actually, I think, makes more noise than the unit does, <laughs> so um, anyway, that's, at least I think that's what we hear more often than we actually hear this, so... Another FYI is again, um, I, you know, I guess you can pay somebody to flush it, but that just seems silly to me. To it's there, it really is not difficult to flush and maintain the unit yourself. Um, and for what you would pay somebody to come and do it, um, it just doesn't seem realistic to me. I don't know why anybody would do that. Um, but in order to flush the system, I did have to go buy a couple items. So I had to. You know, get a couple extra hoses to actually hook up to the unit. And then um, I also ended up having to buy a sump pump um, that I can put into the bucket so that I can put the hose in and then there's a hose here that I connect to one side, that hose connects to the other side. And then um, I just put the um, descaling solution into the bucket and then it just sits there and it, and it circulates uh, for, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour, something like that every six months. So. Um, so that did cause me to go buy these items. They're not items that I would have bought in otherwise. Uh, but again, they were pretty inexpensive and pretty cheap. Another FYI I would have is uh, try to install the unit um, kind of uh, so that you can access it really easily on the top and the bottom. Um, and especially the bottom. So we installed this one, you know, kind of as high as we could because of venting and, and things like that. We couldn't go a whole lot higher. Um, and it seems at first glance that there's plenty of space under there to access the bottom of the unit. But that is where, you know, when you're flushing the system, you have to attach hoses and uh, the filters underneath there as far as the water intake, things like that. So you actually, uh, it, it is kind of a pain with only having this much space down here. And I wish I had it a little higher so that it was easier to access down there. Another very small FYI is uh, kind of the venting for these. So uh, we did have to drill two new holes in the side of the house uh, for the venting. Uh, there's an air intake and then there's the exhaust for it. So I don't really say it as a con. I mean, it's probably not great to you know drill holes in the side of your house, but it's really not. Uh, it actually went a lot easier and faster uh, than I thought it would. Uh, so I wouldn't say it's a, a con necessarily. It's just good to be aware of.
All right, so here's a quick recap of the pros, the cons, and the FYIs. And if uh, these were helpful for you at all, please do uh, like and give me a quick comment. Uh, thanks again for watching, and I hope this was helpful for you.